G'day, Michael here. This is something I don't do very often, and that is a review of a product. I'm not going to have a formal um, like chart and so forth to follow, um, because the test that I've done is not a laboratory test, but uh, it's a real world test. Now, I've done about 800 square metres of cutting. Uh, that cutting is not your typical 800 square metres, at least I would hope not. Uh, my garden's gotten pretty badly out of control. I showed a bit of this in the previous video. Um, now, I simply have discharged this battery twice. It's a 36 volt, uh, 6 amp hour battery. That's uh, like 227 uh, amp watt hours. And uh, it's actually quite a lightweight battery for what it does. I was kind of expecting a heavier battery for this output or you know, a bigger battery or whatever for the amount of work that it does. Now this, the two charges on this battery definitely do more than the one tank on the two-stroke unit that I've got. And the two-stroke unit I've got is the FSA, uh, sorry, the FS85, I believe. And this one's the FSA90, which almost sounds the same, but there's a huge difference. With this guy, it's all electric, powered by that battery. I bought the highest capacity battery, that's what this one is. Um, I'll probably buy a second one. Um, it takes about uh, 20 to 30 minutes to charge the battery and it gives you sort of 30 to 40 minutes of actual work time. So having a second battery and that charger, which is their fastest charger by the way, what's the number? AL500 is the, the model number. Um, you know, the, the charger can deliver as many batteries as you can use. They also have, funny enough, a, um, like a backpack to hold you know, a higher capacity of battery. So this is the, the largest battery that you can put in the unit, but they also also have a, like a backpack to increase the battery yield. Okay, one of the things that really struck me when I used this over, say, the, the petrol version is the fact you don't have petrol. It seems stupidly obvious, but petrol represents smells and spills and, you know, you get petrol on your hands and you can't wash the smell off for it. It takes ages to clear up and you know, you kill the grass if you spill something or whatever. And you've also got to store that fuel. And in the off-season, the fuel actually goes off. So, you, you know, you're losing your, you know, the fuel anyway. And you get varnishizing and so forth in the fuel tank and carburetor and whatever. Uh, the other thing you get is the fuel actually degrades, like the fuel hoses and any diaphragms and bits and bobs in carburetors. Also, those little pump blisters they have for priming the, the carburetors and so forth. There's none of that with the electric. Uh, it's very fuss free. Of course, I haven't seen this thing 10 years old, and I have seen 10, uh, 10 year old two stroke engines, but 10 years you, you really start needing to pay attention to two strokes. You will have had some fairly major, well, even if it's just nothing other than uh, like diaphragms and blisters and fuel hoses, you will have changed those, and the spark plug problems and so forth. Also, the, the engines get very hot when you're working, and so, uh, particularly peak of summer, um, and so you've got to let them cool down before you can do anything. Um, so this is sold as a commercial um, machine and it, I have to give them credit, it is a commercial grade machine. Um, some clever things I noticed about the design in using it, like I said this is not a laboratory test so I can't sort of, you know, it does this so and so square metres according to so and so standard, blah blah blah. But um, I can tell you that this the pair of um, charges on this one battery certainly outperformed uh, the fuel tank on the two stroke. And I would probably put it at something like three batteries to uh, two fuel tanks, something like that. Um, and the performance of the actual unit, I couldn't say that there was any less performance in the electric than there was in the um, petrol. Um, the delivery of power is different. So there are certain things the electric does actually particularly well that the two-stroke struggles with. For example, if you're cutting around things that are hard that might damage your whip cord, the, you know, and you want to slow down a, a, a petrol engine, you have a problem with the sort of clutch stalling and disengaging, and it's very rough on the unit running at lower revs. Whereas electric has no problem, I'll put the battery in and show you what I mean. Electric problem has no problem doing very low speeds. As you can hear, it's very quiet too. Since I let go of the trigger, stop. So the other thing is, if I apply full power, it's a little bit smarter than that. It doesn't give you full power when you pull the trigger. Immediately when you start cutting something, 
it actually you know it picks up a little bit of speed, maybe a, a five or ten percent. Um, so it sort of runs at a like a, a cutting speed, but then it seems to amp up the force as soon as you give it some work to do. So it's a bit dynamic, and I suspect that's what gives it such good battery life because when it is not working, it actually backs off the energy consumption. Whereas a petrol engine, you just send it, tend to have the power up. It's nowhere near as dynamic as obviously the system itself is. Plus, you do have a bit of a control for your maximum speed here. Basically, it's a limit for your, your um, trigger here, your throttle. So, you can wind this up and down to suit yourself. I leave this on flat out because it gives you the full range of power. Okay, now being a commercial machine, it comes with a harness, which helps a lot for fatigue. Now, can I put it on? Next question. There we go. Alright, so the unit. Hangs thusly. So if you haven't had a unit that um, uses a harness, um, you may not be familiar with this, but basically the unit's weight is taken by the harness. Although this is a little bit front heavy, I find that that's the closest thing to a criticism I have of this is that it is a little front heavier than the two-stroke. Two-stroke, obviously with the engine at the back, it sits a little bit better on the harness. So I find this a little bit imbalanced. Maybe I can tweak this height around a little bit, but I think I've pretty much adjusted it as far as I can for my body height. So we'll see how that goes. You know, I'll tweak it over time. But I do find this a little bit too front heavy for my liking. Maybe I'll actually put a bit of a counterweight on here one day. But for the moment, um, that's that. Now you can see I've actually done work with it. This is a genuine, you know, I have used it. It's done quite a bit. Now, we've had a bit of rain lately, and unfortunately I haven't had a, a dry enough period that I could use like a lawnmower. So the bits that I would have done with a lawnmower, I've done with this as well, because the grass is too wet, and you'd end up with just paste in the inside of your lawnmower. Um, so, yeah, using a, a, a line trimmer or a whipper snipper or whatever, whatever you want to call this type of unit, uh, has advantages in wet weather. Now you'd think that'd be really bad with an electric motor, but what they appear to have done here is there's a fan here that blows out air and draws air in at the battery through the tube. Um, so I actually had no hold up using this machine out in the wet grass. When I say wet, it wasn't actually raining, it was just residual moisture from raining a few hours before. All right, so you, like I said, you can adjust those things to see yourself, but I do find it front heavy. Uh, the performance is amazing, and uh, the battery, I reckon, is about three charges to the battery compared to, say, two, two full tanks. But the other thing with uh, this being electric and not having an engine is there's a whole lot of maintenance you don't have. You don't have the, the, the diaphragms, the blisters, the fuel hoses, uh, any that sort of thing to muck around on a day to day basis like you seem to have with two stroke. And this looks like a typical key that they would have supplied with a two stroke. I don't think there's anything on this unit that the socket would apply to. So I think they just threw in this as their generic tool and that's it. You use this, uh, it's like a Torx bit, for any of the screws that I've seen that I've come across. Um, in any case, there's lots of documentation if you need to read up on things. It's quite a substantial manual, but most of that's based on the fact that there's lots of languages. And the chart, of course, comes with its own documentation, the typical sort of. So, uh, the other thing is, with the two-stroke engine, you want to have earmuffs because of the noise, if you're exposed to the noise for any long period of time. Whereas with the electric, being as quiet as it is, they provide these specs, and uh, that seems to be enough to do the job. Well, I think I've covered everything that matters. Um, feel free to like, share, subscribe, ask a question, leave a comment. Bye for now.